All right, hello from Pier 33 Marina in St. Joseph, Michigan. Uh, we're doing this video for our friend Brian. Uh, Brian has just made a purchase on a brand new Roballo R160 center console. So Brian, uh, I'd like to do a quick walkthrough here on the boat for you so you're familiar with it. Uh, so that when you get it home and take the travel cover off, uh, you know what we've got for you. So let's start right here at the bow. On the Roballo 160, you've got a nice casting platform up front. Ahead of the casting platform, we've got a plug-in for a power point in case you ever add a trolling motor to this boat. If you do decide to add a trolling motor, uh, this area of the deck is reinforced to accommodate that. And there's also a spare battery tray with wiring built into the console. You'll see that in a few minutes. But the uh, plug for that trolling motor would be right here in the bow. Uh, underneath the casting platform, there's an insulated fish box. You could also use that as a cooler for drinks or food, whatever. Right now, inside that box, we've got a couple of articles stored for you. There are uh, throwable flotation cushions, as well as both of your covers. These two blue covers, one will cover the entire console, the other one will cover your helm seat leaning post. So uh, these will be folded up inside here for you. I've also got A drain stopper I'm going to put in that same compartment. That'll allow you to keep your ice and everything uh, nice and tidy in there. That's gasket sealed so things that you do put in there won't be subject to wave splash and rain. Uh, forward of the console itself, you've got a forward facing seat with an optional cushion. The cushion is removable. Underneath that cushion is your live well. Okay, so you've got a live well with a standpipe and there's also a dispenser for your uh, incoming water for the live one. In the backrest, built into the backrest, is access to the inside of your helm console. Inside there you will find some wiring access for a chase for any uh, equipment you might add. You'll find the spare battery tray and also you will find the uh, white anchor light. That's a folding pole and it fits into a special slot in that section. So that should be used anytime you're going to be navigating after dusk, before dawn, foggy conditions or rainy conditions. And that's stored right inside the home console itself. To close that back up, put these notches into place, give it a pop and now it's nice and tight. Uh, we'll come back to the helm in a moment, but you do have a reversible leaning post leaning post seat, so obviously in the forward facing position. This will also flip around if you're just watching the sun go down or watching your fishing lines. Built in underneath this console, and Caleb, how about if you move this way just a little bit? Cameraman Caleb Casper. Usually is a boat technician, but right now he's a cameraman. Okay, this is a built in cooler, so you've got a fully insulated cooler underneath the uh, helm seat. Right now we've got a bag of life jackets in there that's also got fire extinguisher, flare kit, an air horn, things that you need to be water legal as part of your safety kit. We've also got a couple of fresh stock lines stashed in there for you as well. Uh, the anchor itself is underneath this seat. Comes with a handy Roballo bucket, you can use that for a net for tools for other things, but we find that's also a great way to store the anchor. There's anchor, anchor line, and uh, coated chain in there for you. We'll keep these stored inside here. On this side, this is your battery access underneath this seat side. So you've got a fresh interstate battery in there. Uh, on the forward side of this same panel, and actually at the angle that Caleb is standing, you might you probably won't be able to see it, but there's a red rotator switch right here in the corner. That switch, when it's pointing straight up, that shuts your battery off. So none of your accessories on the boat will function. You don't have to worry about leaving a light on. Just make sure that switch is turned to the off position when you're ready to use the boat. 
switch it to the three o'clock position and that will allow you to energize everything on board. In uh, the, by the way, both of your seats lay down flat. Turns this into a nice casting deck. That's also a good way to keep your upholstery protected. Uh, there aren't separate covers for these seats, so if you lay them down, that'll keep the upholstered pieces primarily out of the sun. In between the two seats, this lid folds open, so that then you've got access to your fuel tank. This boat is equipped with the optional 18-gallon tank. Standard capacity is 12 gallons, and as part of Pier 33's uh, make-ready procedure for you, you are functionally full. So on the tank, you've got a fuel fill area, as well as a direct gauge uh, that reads. All you need to do is lift the uh, center panel, and you can even access this. It's reachable from ground level. So if you're pulling into the gas station, you've got the, uh, the nozzle ready. Just flip the uh, lid up, unscrew it, and fill her up. Um, I'd like to go through some of the dash components. Caleb, if you could get just a little better angle. All right. It's a very simple dash design. In a few minutes, we will uh, start up the motor so that you, we can show you our shop startup. You've got a tachometer here that's also got uh, warning lights on it for you for oil pressure or for uh, water flow through the engine for temperature for the engine. On this side, of course, you've got a full set of operational switches as, as uh, well as uh, weather protected breakers for those. So got your horn, the horn is mounted right on the front of the center console uh, bilge pump. We've tested each of these systems. You've got a multi-position switch for your navigation lights and also in another position for just your anchor light. Uh, there are cockpit courtesy lights. You may see a little blue glow down along the floor. So those nice LEDs are great for dark conditions. There's a switch here for your live well. We can hear the live well running in the background. Obviously when we're dry on shore, it's not picking up any water, so it's not bringing any in. This bottom switch marked accessory is actually a, a open circuit. You can attach any kind of an electrical accessory that you add to the boat uh, through that switch. And then right underneath that, there is a plug-in power point so that you can use that for a cell phone charger or anything else that would plug into that type of receptacle. Um, I think what we'll do next, let's go ahead and we'll get a water supply turned on so we can do a shop uh, start up here for you on the engine. We'll talk about your Yamaha a little bit while it's running. So, okay, I'll get a stop point and then we'll get the engine ready to run. Okay. Uh, Caleb's down at ground level so he can give you a better view of everything that goes on here now. Uh, we've turned on a water supply so we can run this engine on a hose for you. Uh, and your startup procedure is going to be pretty simple. Uh, of course, you want to make sure if you're starting it on land, nobody's near the back of the boat. Don't shift this thing in and out of gear if you've got passers by walking through it all. Uh, don't ever run your boat dry just to see if it runs. It always has to have a water supply to it before you can do that. Uh, the other key thing before you can start the motor is that the safety lanyard must be in place. Uh, we're using one of our shop lanyards right now, but we're going to put a Yamaha uh, lanyard on here before the boat leaves for you. And the safety lanyard is very important. First off, the engine won't operate unless the safety lanyard is, is in its position. But more importantly, from a safety standpoint, this lanyard is attached to the driver. And there's any kind of an incident that causes the driver to be dislodged from the controls, the safety lanyard would yank free from the boat and that would kill the engine. That is a very important safety protocol for Yamaha. So to start the boat, you must have the safety lanyard in place, you must have the battery switch on, and before anything will turn over, you, you also have to make sure that your shifter is in the neutral position. So we've got all those things ready to roll. This is a fuel injected four stroke Yamaha. You don't have to pump the throttle or anything of that nature. We're going to key it to an odd position and then I'm going to roll it over for the start. Lanyard for a second. 
Okay, so obviously we've got more noise out of it right now because of the way that we're out of the water. So your exhaust is coming right out through the prop. But in just a moment, Caleb's going to walk around to the opposite side of the engine and he will show you that sight stream that comes out of the side of the engine that shows you that the engine is pumping water. Uh, that's an important thing to look for within just a few seconds of starting the motor to make sure the engine is pumping properly. So Caleb, if you go ahead and swing around to that side uh, and show uh, Brian where to look for that. So earlier today during our make ready process, Caleb ran the engine to make sure it was ready to go for you. Back here in the splash well, by the fuel tank, there is a primer bulb. So if you have not used the uh, engine for some extended period of time, that might mean a week, that might mean a month. But in any case, uh, this primer ball has to be full, has to be hard so that you're sure that you're delivering fuel to the engine. I think it can leak down a little bit if it's uh, unused for a period of time. So if you haven't used the boat in a while, before you fire it up, make sure that you've got a, a nice firm uh, primer ball there and it should key right off or should fire right up as soon as you key it on. Uh, when Brian is here with me, I'll go through the Yamaha engine owner's manuals. We'll talk uh, about the break-in procedure for the motor. We put about two hours of time on this engine right now. Uh, you're going to treat it gently during, especially during its first 20 hours of use and during the first 10 hours of use. Uh, we don't want you to acceler accelerate to full throttle or operate at full throttle for any extended period of time. Uh, you'll see in the Yamaha owner's manual there are particular recommendations about that. And then as you proceed past 10 hours of use towards 20, I want you to continue to operate it at varying speeds. That's the best way to break in your motor. When you're done with approximately 20 hours of operation, that's when you should get a, a Yamaha technician to give the engine a check over as well as do your first oil change. Um, I want to make sure that we don't forget something because we're not going to get to go for a boat ride together. Uh, we've gone through a fairly complete uh, look over the boat's features, uh, engine operation, those other things that we will cover in the manuals with Brian. Uh, before the boat leaves, our crew is going to put a uh, trucking cover, a trailering cover over the entire boat. When they do that, we will fold down this folding windshield. And to uh, raise and lower the windshield, there are thumb screws on each side that will hold it in place uh, when you put it back up. So that windshield will be laid over uh, when you see the boat for the first time. Just prop it up, put the thumb screws back into place, and the windshield will look just the way it does now. We'll make sure that you got your full set of owner's manuals, two sets of keys, uh, full tank of gas, you've got safety gear on board, and I hope the next thing that happens is that you get some great weather so that you can go trash your boat. Uh, thanks a lot for doing business with Pier 33, and have a lot of fun with your robot. Before we go, because I almost forgot, let's talk about a couple of very important things at the back end of the boat. First off, right now, we've still got the battery switch on, so I can uh, tilt this motor up out of the way. Once the motor is up and you're ready to go down the road, there's a support latch that you can flip into place. Let's get it all the way up. You flip this latch down, just snug, just snug, very gently, the motor back down into place. Ideally you will turn it, turn the wheel so that the motor stays straight while it's tilted up. But this will help support the motor while you're uh, moving. Uh, what we're going to do here when we're done is we're going to leave this motor in a completely vertical position 
so that any water drains out of the engine and then you don't have any potential for freeze damage in cold weather. Uh, but I also wanted to lift it up because one of the very most important pieces of equipment on your boat is the hull plug. So right down here at the center base and it is it can be screwed in by hand and then can be tightened with pliers or a wrench but this is your hull plug please always double check that or triple check that before you uh, lower your boat down the ramp. The hull itself is self bailing but you do have an inner uh, build that houses different kinds of pumps and other uh, wire chases um, so if you need to pull the plug to let any water that's accumulated in those out uh, go ahead and do that but always before you put the boat down the ramp double check to make sure the hull plug is there. The other things that you see back here uh, this is part of your drain system uh, and this is your intake for the live well. That's what that screen is. You'll also notice, and this is a good thing to do also before you get that to the launch ramp, you've got uh, trailer tie downs that we've supplied for you. These tie downs should be cinched to the trailer and to the boat when you're leaving the ramp or leaving your home to make sure the boat is secured to properly to the trailer. Back up the other way, get that out of the way. Tilt her back down. Okay, uh, we're going to tilt that back up for you before it leaves. Never pull your boat on the trailer with the motor in that position, okay, to avoid damage to the skin. Kale, okay, can you think of anything else that, we, that I had almost forgotten about? Okay. All right, we're in good shape. Again, uh, have a great time with your boat.